ARK's smallest stocks are the topic of today's presentation. And ARK Invest needs no introduction, and neither does this woman here, Kathy Wood. Our previous presentation on Kathy Wood's microcaps looked at four different companies, QuantumSci, Vuzix, Mark Forged, and 2U. Today we're going to look at the other six companies in this set. And all we did here is we took the holdings of ARK Invest across all their ETFs. Then we sorted them by size. So these are the smallest companies that ARK has invested in. And when we talk about size, this breakdown here on the right is a pretty traditional way that financial institutions will use to classify companies. And small caps, you may uh, refer to companies these this size or in this size range as small caps, but the proper definition would be micro cap. And then there's also nano cap, which might be 100 million or below. And different providers uh, have different classifications, but uh, these are in the ballpark. So in this presentation, we're going to look at part two here and a number of firms that you can see listed here, Blade Air, 908, Invitae, Minaric, Codexis, and Personalis. Now, when we invest in tech stocks, we have a market cap cutoff of a billion dollars. That means we don't invest in stocks with a market cap that's less than a billion dollars. And you can pause the presentation and take a look at this slide. It sort of describes our strategy when it comes to the size of companies that we invest in. And alongside the bottom there, you see uh, the target percentage weighting of our 37 tech stock portfolio. Now, you need to be uh, careful when you take inspiration from ARK because this is an active investment manager and it's not always obvious why they make certain trades. Now, the data we used for this presentation was taken while well, it's coming up on a month ago, and we simply wanted to uh, take a snapshot at that time. It still seems to be uh, fairly accurate in terms of these being the smallest stocks that ARK has invested in. Our interest here lies in looking at what we might be missing out on with that $1 billion market cap cutoff rule. I always put context around the position size as a percentage of total AUM. And our recent presentation on Warren Buffett stocks talks specifically about this, that even though a famous active manager might take a position in a company relative to their total holdings, it's oftentimes quite small. And you also need to consider stock price declines. One of our subscribers brought this up, and indeed they're correct. Um, nearly all the stocks we're going to talk about today have slid rather dramatically in the past years. So uh, it isn't as if ARK invested when they were this size. They just happen to be this size in their portfolio now. And of course, it's not over until the big, beautiful woman sings. So let's get right down to business, talk about the first company. It's Blade, Blade Air Mobility. We wrote about this firm, and I'm going to put a link to all the research pieces that we've done about the six, or say the most recent research pieces we've done on the six companies we're going to talk about today in the description of this video. So this is a firm that um, is starting down the path of the air mobility thesis using helicopters. So the, the premise here is that there's all these routes that could be fulfilled by eVTOL aircraft, and in the meantime, they're going to use uh, helicopters, short distance travel, they call it, and that eventually they'll replace those choppers with eVTOL aircraft, and that autonomy will then realize the real value. In our analysis, and we've looked at eVTOLs extensively, and the research shows that flying an eVTOL and a helicopter, you won't see uh, much of a price difference between those two methods of transportation, it comes down to not having a pilot. So autonomy will be the big deal. EV tolls really are this build it and they will come story. The idea being that everybody wants to fly all these routes that aren't being serviced right now and that EV tool aircraft will open those up. Well, Blade Air is their short distance segment is showing us the demand for these planned EV toll routes. And we'll look at that in a second. But the thesis you can read here, it starts with existing fixed routes that are currently serviced by helicopters. You consolidate all operators within these fixed routes to capture economies of scale, replace those choppers with EV toll aircraft once they cost less to fly than helicopters, expand the number of routes because EV toll aircraft aren't as loud as choppers, then realize increased margins when you introduce unmanned eVTOL aircraft. We don't even have eVTOL aircraft flying routes yet, so we're a ways from autonomy. Now, when you look at the revenues for Blade Air, 
pretty nice little business here. You can see that their medical revenues are growing nicely. This would be things like organ transplant, and you can see the margins along the bottom there. So for passengers and these three components here, you have short distance. That would be the uh, the choppers flying people on EV toll routes or future EV toll routes. Then you have jet uh, leasing and, and stuff like that. And then medical, and you can see this blended uh, margin under 20%. So this isn't a high margin business. Short distance, you can see there is more sporadic and it's not a majority of revenue. So you're not getting a lot of pure play there. But keep an eye on that short distance component. They break it down in their revenues to see how appealing this transport method is and how demand will increase. The next step, if you were an investor in this firm, would be really to dig into that medical segment uh, to see what sort of competition they have. And autonomy uh, for organ transplant or for the medical segment sounds very interesting. So, And also, I suppose they're looking at xenotransplantation, so eventually they'll have these... Um, uh, organs grown from animals that will be flown to places where people need them, and we've covered that uh, theme in other presentations. Next firm, we're going to talk about 908 devices. These highly sensitive machines they build can detect, identify, and quantify molecular samples based on molecular weight. So you can see here on the left there, Revenue growth is rather volatile. Their customer concentration risk is getting a whole lot better since the last time we checked. So three customers make up 35% of their total revenues, pretty much broken down equally between the three. This isn't the only game in town, so other firms build these mass spectrometers. Uh, the valuation was rather high the last time we checked. They had a simple valuation ratio of 11 compared to our catalog average of 6.5. Well, now it's around four, so that's uh, you wouldn't consider this to be overvalued. Their 2022 gross margins of 55% are quite attractive, and sh so are the recurring revenue streams they have. A third of their revenues in 2022 were from recurring revenues. Now, the concern that we had around this business, um, some of those have been addressed, but uh, the big concern was the size of the total addressable market. So they describe it here as rather small in 2020, being around under five billion dollars and then in five years they expect that to grow more than fivefold to 22 billion dollars so whether or not uh, that actually happens remains to be seen but certainly uh, perhaps the, the most promising business of the six that we're going to talk about today maybe uh, on par with blade air in terms of attractiveness now um, i'm going to pause for a second here the last presentation that we did uh, was on chewy we asked everybody to like the video, and here on the left, you can see our last 10 videos, and look at what happened when we asked people to like. 15% of people liked that video compared to the highest you see of more around the range of 6 to 8% that we typically see. All we need to do is ask, and people's engagement increases. So even though they like the video, they don't take the time to actually click the thumbs up. Please do that right now. You, that engagement rates will help us spread our videos far and wide. And since we don't run ads, we need your help to spread these videos. So please like this. So let's get on to the next firm, Invitae. Their biggest focus right now is on surviving, not thriving. And this happens to be a firm that we're holding and we're underwater the most out of any stock in our portfolio. We covered that a topic in this piece earlier this year. It's called Falling Out of Love with Invitae Stock. And uh, four years from now, this firm is going to need to come up with $1.45 billion when the debt collector comes knocking. In the meantime, you can see along the bottom there, they're operating cash flows. While they're reducing the amount that they're burning, they're still burning quite a bit. They have about six quarters left with the $336 million on their books. Don't equate value to a cheap stock price. So some people uh, see the stock price being under a dollar and think that's a good thing. It isn't. First of all, that's going to result in a delisting. They had a warning recently issued, and all that means is that they'll be demoted to the over-the-counter exchange, and what they'll do is reverse split their stock, most likely to stay listed. Uh, this is a firm that um, is in some real trouble. You can see that patient growth there, and this, these metrics uh, are taken from their latest investor deck, is slowing. Revenue per patient, look at that falling. That's not good. Ongoing cash burn as a percent of revenue seems to, in the last two quarters, have stabilized around 44%. Uh, they're burning a lot of cash, and that's uh, they're expected this year to burn between $220 million to $245, which is a 50% reduction. So this firm was just spending a ton of money and 
Uh, now they're having to worry about surviving. So it certainly um, it, there's a lot of risk with Invite. Next on our list, Minaric. They build laser communications for satellites. No meaningful revenues yet. We define that as $10 million or more. When a company doesn't hasn't hit that threshold, we just walk away. We're just not interested. So um, they're on target, though, to at least, it seems, do around um, probably $9 million based on $4.4 million they realized for the first half of this year. So that's good to see. Nearly 80% of that was listed as services, and services businesses can't scale that rapidly. So there would be some concern around that. Uh, we would want to pay attention to product sales because that would then start utilizing all this backlog they keep talking about. Uh, so uh, space is probably the riskiest theme that we cover, and uh, when a company hasn't proven themselves with meaningful revenues, we just move on. Brings us to Codexis. Synbio has not been good to retail investors. We um, poked holes in firms like Zymergen, and, which was purchased by Ginkgo, and Amaris, which went bankrupt, and we uh, correctly warned investors to avoid that firm like the plague. Here's an article from Biospace in 2017. It says, at a market cap of just $335 million, this is one small cap stock begging to be bought. Not really, because now it's at $108 million, so it must be really begging. The size of a company... Just because it, it, it falls and falls and falls doesn't mean there's value to be had there. So what Codexis does is enzyme optimization services with a niche in pharma. So our recent piece on Ginkgo Bioworks looked at Novozymes and the work that they do in enzymes. This isn't anything new, but Codexis has a niche. Uh, they're focused on a niche, and that's how they're able to compete. They recently cut 25% of heads and expect their cash to last until mid-2026. That's because they're betting the farm on this eco-synthesis technology platform they built that will do RNAi therapeutics production. When you subtract Pfizer from the equation, and um, the RONA brought them a windfall of revenues, as did uh, a number of other firms, but you can see here their revenue growth um, is stalling and has tailed off last year. And below there, you can see how product revenue just completely sunk as a result of them um, losing Pfizer as one of their major customers. So you need to um, consider the fact that their, their growth has stalled. And we invest in disrupt, disruptive growth firms because they're growing. Last on our list, Personalis. We wrote this piece last year, why we no longer like Personalis stock. When we first looked at it, we were attracted to the uh, population sequencing theme that looked rather interesting. But you see this chart here on the left taken from Yahoo Finance. That's the kiss of death when your revenues start to fall and your earnings um, drop precipitously. So the business model doesn't appear to be overly lucrative. You can see that on the upper right here, their gross margins over time are being compressed more recently to around 20%. That's perhaps because they're pivoting away from population sequencing, as you can see in the below table. You see that drop in revenue. And then moving into this vague category, enterprise sales. They're doing some work for Netera. We talk about that in our piece, so you may just want to read that. The biggest concern that we had with this firm, and it remains today, is their customer concentration risk. And Netera has now replaced the VA MVP uh, as a major customer. So there isn't anything. Personalis is now sitting at around a $60 million market cap. Uh, they're burning about $70 million a year. They have about two years runway left. So there isn't anything attractive about that company from where we're sitting. So to conclude, Blade Air and 908 Devices, they're most compelling of the companies we've looked at today. In Vitae, in a world of hurt, Codexis isn't restoring our faith in the promises of SynBio. Uh, Personalis seems to be melting away. Uh, the takeaway here, set a market cap cutoff and stick to it as an investor, and you'll avoid land a lot of landmines. And just remember what we said in part one, micro cap investors are not being sufficiently rewarded for the risks they're taking. And we looked at some analysis and research that showed that. Now, I'm going to put up that first presentation in case you haven't seen it. Before you watch that, please click the Analyze logo on the right. Support our work. We don't run ads. We need your help to support this channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.